In this video, we'll be discussing about the cancer, a general overview of cancer. Then later on, we will get into the genetics, its molecular mechanisms in detail. Before we start our lecture, let me remind you, this video is sponsored by Nerdy Tutors. It's an on-demand tutoring platform which connects students with the best matching tutors in minutes. The platform is super mobile friendly. It allows students to chat with the tutor right on the phone. Nerdy Tutors understands what sort of problem a student is having and use smart algorithms to find the best tutor to explain the right concepts. Use the link in the description today and get $10 off of your first tutoring session. Now getting to our lecture. In simple words, we can say cancer is abnormal uncontrolled cell growth without any check. To put it diagrammatically, we see we have the cell. It divides simply through cell division in controlled manner. But it's when the division loses its control, we get the uncontrolled cell division, from which we get the mass of cells. That eventually depletes resources and sometimes also invades nearby tissues and organs when it attains mobility called the metastasis. Another thing to consider here is the changes that occur in the cancer cells. During carcinogenesis, six fundamental cellular properties are altered that are the cell evades growth suppressors. The cell sustains proliferative signaling. It resists apoptosis. Then it also induces angiogenesis. Then within the cell there is replicative immortality. And ultimately we get the activation of invasion through the process of metastasis. When all the above properties are fulfilled, we call that cell a cancerous cell or tumor cell. Now let's see the cancer at gene level. We have three different kind of genes that are able to promote the cancers once mutated. First one is the proto-oncogenes. Second one is the tumor suppressor genes. Third one is the genome maintenance genes. The proto-oncogene is a normal gene. But once mutated, it becomes oncogene that can promote the cancer. Whereas the tumor suppressor gene inhibits and checks the cell proliferation or tumor formation. But once it also gets mutated, it can promote the cancer. Then we have the genome maintenance genes that maintain the integrity of genome from any kind of errors, like we have DNA repair genes. But these genes once mutated also contribute to the cancer. Also keep in mind that the cancer drives through ordered steps. Like first we have the initiation, followed by promotion, then progression. And if tumor mass mobilizes, we call that a metastasis. Then we have a concept of chromoanagenesis, which are the events that generate complex structural chromosomal abnormalities. This chromoanagenesis occurs through three mechanisms, chromoplexy, chromothripsis, and break fusion bridge cycles. The chromoplexy involves the complex DNA rearrangement in the genome of cancer cell, whereas chromothripsis involves the cluster chromosomal rearrangement in a single event. And the break fusion bridge involves the telomerase-less chromosomes fused together which induce the chromosomal abnormalities. Above all of these terms, we also encounter with another term during cancer study, which is the catagis. That involves localized hypermutation in a small region of DNA. Moving on, when all these mutations occur, we get two important type of tumors, what we call as benign and malignant tumors. Benign tumors are slowly growing mass, whereas malignant is rapidly growing mass. Benign tumors are non-invasive in nature, does not show metastasis, whereas malignant are invasive in nature and show metastasis. Also benign tumor shows encapsulation, whereas malignant rarely shows encapsulation. So these are the major differences between benign and malignant tumor in a brief way. Now another factor to consider here is the energy in the cancer cells. These cells harnesses energy through Warburg effect, which is actually the lactic acid fermentation, either oxygen is present or absent. First of all, we have the glucose molecule. It gets into glycolysis pathway, where it is oxidized into two pyruvate molecules. And in that process, we get two ATP molecules and also NAD plus is reduced to NADH. Now this pyruvate molecule will get into TCA cycle or we can say Krebs cycle. Then it's followed by oxidative phosphorylation in presence of oxygen, that's aerobic respiration. 
But when oxygen is absent, we send these pyruvate molecules into fermentation, that's anaerobic respiration. And this happens with the cancer cells also, where pyruvate drives into lactate fermentation. We see pyruvate gets converted into lactate through lactate fermentation while receiving electrons from NADH produced in the glycolysis. And this NADH again gets oxidized into NAD+, that's used again in glycolysis. But it must be noted that in cancer cells or in cancer, the pyruvate will always lead into lactate fermentation, whether oxygen is present or absent. Now if we calculate the energy of cancer cell, we see one glucose molecule produces two pyruvate molecules. And these two pyruvate molecules will produce four ATP molecules. That means a cancer cell will produce four ATP molecules per glucose molecule. So this concludes the overview of cancer and the basic concept is related to it. I hope you like the video. If you like it, give it a thumbs up. Do consider supporting my work on Patreon and also make sure to subscribe to this channel. Thanks.